Recombinant adenoviruses are wonderful tools used by scientists for high-efficiency large gene sequence transfers into almost any cell type. Whether it is for in vitro or for in vivo experiments, transduction of dividing or non-dividing cells, recombinant adenoviruses can be exactly what you need to achieve large-scale, high transduction efficiency. In our previous video, we covered the basics of adenovirus packaging, starting from cloning your gene of interest into ABM's adenovirus expression system, followed by transfection of DNA into HEC-293 cells, and leading to the collection of a low titer adenoviral seed stock. You can find the link to that video in the description below. In this video, we will cover the basics of High titer viral amplification with adherent or suspension HEC-293 cells. Virus purification using iodexano gradient ultracentrifugation or cesium chloride density gradient ultracentrifugation. Virus titration by endpoint dilution assay. Let's get started! ABM's adenovirus expression vector is designed without the early viral transcription units E1 and E3 proteins, and is therefore replication defective. As a result, recombinant adenovirus packaging requires cell lines expressing the E1 gene, such as HEC-293 adherent cells or suspension cells. To generate high titer adenovirus, we will infect HEC-293 cells with pre-made seed stocks as discussed in our previous video. We will use 10 to the 11th PFU per mil as an example in the following procedure. However, more or less cells can be adopted for a lower or higher titer desired. Prepare 20 plates of HEC-293 cells in 15 cm cell culture dishes at 75% confluent at the time of seed stock infection. Replace the old media from each plate with 20 ml of fresh complete media before inoculating with 1 ml of seed stock per plate. Incubate until the cells exhibit complete cytopathic effect, where greater than 90% of the cells have detached from the plate. This process should take approximately 3 to 5 days. Collect cells and supernatant using a cell scraper and centrifuge at 3,500 RPM for 20 minutes to pellet the cells. Resuspend the cells in 500 microliters of gradient buffer per plate. Resuspended cells can be stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius if purification will not proceed immediately after cell collection. Freeze thaw the cell pellet three times by alternating between dry ice and a 37 degrees Celsius water bath. Vortex briefly after each freeze thaw cycle. The freeze thaw step will release the adenovirus from the cells into the supernatant. Centrifuge the lysate at 10,000 RPM for 10 minutes and transfer the supernatant into a new 50 ml conical tube. Your supernatant is now ready for virus purification. If you are using suspension cells, prepare 100 ml of cells at a density of 1.5 million per ml one day before its seed stock inoculation. Inoculate suspension cells at a ratio of 1 to 200. For example, 0.5 ml of virus per 100 ml of cell, and wait 3 to 5 days for CPE to complete. After complete CPE is achieved, harvest the cells and media in a centrifuge bottle. Centrifuge the cells and media at 7,500 RPM for 10 minutes to pellet the cells. Resuspend cell pellets in 10 ml of gradient buffer and perform 3 cycles of freeze thaw. Spin at 10,000 RPM for 10 minutes to clarify the supernatant. Your supernatant is now ready for virus purification. Prepare the iodexano density gradient in ultracentrifuge tubes by adding the reagents in the following order. 8 ml of 15% iodexano, 5 ml of 25% iodexano, 5 ml of 40% iodexano, and 5 ml of 58% iodexano. Overlay your supernatants onto the iodexano gradient, 
take care not to disturb the gradient layers. Centrifuge at 60,000 RPM for 1 hour at 10 degrees Celsius. Use an 18 gauge needle and syringe to release pressure at the top of the tube. Carefully extract the virus solution using the same needle from between the 25% and 40% iodexanol layers. Next, transfer virus preparations into a pre-wet dialysis bag and dialyze in a 4 to 6 liter beaker or flask against one time PBS or the final desired buffer. Place the setup on a magnetic stirrer overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Next day, discard all PBS. Add 4 liters of fresh PBS and continue buffer exchange for another 1.5 hours. Transfer dialyzed virus into a 30 kilodalton MWCO spin column and concentrate the virus to a desired volume. Finally, pass the virus through a 0.22 syringe filter. Add glycerol to a final concentration of 5% and mix thoroughly. Aliquot and store at minus 80 degrees Celsius. Another method to purify high titer adenovirus particles is to use the cesium chloride density gradient ultra centrifugation method. Prepare the cesium chloride gradient tubes in ultra centrifuge tubes. Add 10 ml of 1.4 grams per ml cesium chloride solution to the ultra centrifuge tube. Slowly overlay 10 ml of 1.25 grams per ml cesium chloride solution followed by 10 ml of virus supernatant. Centrifuge at 60,000 RPM for 1 hour at 10 degrees Celsius. The lowest band between the 1.25 and 1.4 grams per mil layers in the tube contains intact virus particles. A second upper band may be observed which contains defective virus particles. Do not extract this upper band. To extract the virus band, use a 22 gauge needle and syringe. Pierce a hole at the top of the tube to release air pressure, and then insert the needle 1 cm below the lower virus band. Carefully extract the intact virus with the bevel up. Transfer the virus particles to a 30 kilodalton MWCO spin column and concentrate the virus to the desired volume. Finally, filter the viral solution with a 0.22 syringe filter. Add glycerol to a final concentration of 5% and mix thoroughly. Aliquot and store at minus 80 degrees Celsius. Now that you have your purified sample, the last step is to calculate the virus titer. In each well of a 96 well plate, see 293 cells in 100 microliters of complete media so that they will be 10 to 20% confluent the next day. The following day, Prepare a 1 in 1000 dilution by diluting 10 microliters of purified adenovirus stock in 10 ml of complete media. Vortex for 5 seconds. Make a series of 10 additional dilutions, each by a factor of 10. Label column 1 through 10 of the 96 well plate with the corresponding dilutions. Increase from left to right. The last two columns of the plate will serve as uninfected negative control. For uninfected negative controls, add 100 microliters of fresh complete media to each well of the last two columns of the plate in order to measure uninfected cell viability. Next, carefully pipette 100 microliter of the diluted virus to each well of the corresponding column on the 96 well plate. 8 wells per column, which equals 8 replicates. Each column of the plate should be infected with the corresponding dilution. Incubate the plate for 10 to 14 days and monitor cytopathic effects every 3 to 4 days. The column infected with higher concentrations of virus should exhibit CPE by day 4. On day 14, record whether a cell is CPE positive or CPE negative. Wells showing any signs of CPE are given a score of 1, and wells showing no CPE are scored at 0. Calculate titer using the spearman carber equation. Multiply the value obtained by 10 to obtain virus titer in TCID50 per mil. Then multiply by 0.69 to convert to plaque forming units 
PFU per mil. You have now successfully isolated high titer adenovirus particles and calculated the virus titer for downstream applications. To learn more about adenovirus, check out our learning resources at abmgood.com.